everyone, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, I have my Derwent Inktense pencils. I absolutely love these. <laughs> there was a post in my Facebook group and somebody was asking about the Derwent Inktense pencils and how you can blend them and the different ways they could be activated. And I have been asked this so many times, so I thought, let me just sit down and make a video. So today in this video, I'm gonna show you quite a few different ways that you can activate your Derwent Inktense pencils, as well as some different techniques to blend them. I'm also going to do a couple do's and don'ts and demonstrate those so that you could see the differences in the results. These pencils are very, very different. They are one of a kind. <laughs> They do go down on the paper like regular colored pencils, but once you activate them with water, the color just pops. It's absolutely amazing. So you'll see that today in this video. In this video today, I'm gonna demonstrate these methods on this piece of Spring Hill paper that I have here. I find that they work really nicely on the Spring Hill paper. There's actually a whole color along on my channel where I colored this page here. This is from Rachel Mintz, her uh, friendship coloring book. I absolutely love the way that it turned out. But all of this, you could see how intense and beautiful and bright and vibrant this color is all here on his clothing, the flower, the butterfly, this little mushroom here, the grass, and all of this bottom part here. Most of it is done with Derwent Ink Tents. This here is done with Prismacolors, and the background, I think the background is with Neocolors. But I will link the full playlist for this color along up in the right-hand corner if you'd like to see that. In this video, I'm just going to demonstrate a lot of these techniques here on this paper. And in a next video that I'm probably also filming today, I am going to bring these amazing pencils to a coloring book. So t stay tuned for that one as well. If you check the description box down below, you will find everything down there that you see in this video, as well as links to my email list, my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, Shop and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. You can find more information out about that if you just click the join button down below. Okay, so I have the bright blue ink tents here and I'm just going to swatch a little bit of this onto the paper. And you can use these as regular colored pencils and they will still blend, but I'm gonna show you right now the difference once you add water and activate them, it's absolutely amazing. So the first method I'm gonna show you is just with a paintbrush. And so I'm gonna wet my brush just a little bit, and then I'm just gonna go over this and look at that pop of color. These are just so amazing, I absolutely love them, and they work really well on this paper. A lot of the trick with these though is to not use a lot of water. Don't drench your brush and put a whole lot of water on it and really, really soak it because you will be very unhappy with your results, especially in a coloring book. A lot of our coloring books have much thinner paper and so we want to be really careful so that we don't drench the paper and ruin our coloring page. I'm gonna put a little bit of this right next to it so this way you could see the difference from what it looks like once it's been activated and when it hasn't been activated yet. So this is just the straight color and that is what it looks like. Look at the difference, it's absolutely amazing. And it's very important to swatch these out because you can see that this color here and this color here, they don't even really look the same anymore. This one looks a lot darker and then once it's been activated, this one looks a whole lot brighter. Okay, so let me go ahead and lay some more of it down here. I'm gonna use the bright blue again and my favorite method and way to use these is to use a water brush. This is my Derwent water brush. These are my absolute favorite water brushes. I have tons of water brushes, but I find that I always go back to these. Somebody in my Facebook group also asked how to use a water brush. Now to fill the water brush, you're just going to untwist it right here. And then what I like to do is I like to take a cup with water in it like this one here, I have this over here to clean my brush for this video, but I like to squeeze it. Here, let me take some of it out so I could show you. But I like to squeeze it like this and then put it in the water and let go and it will fill the water brush. But that is how you fill them and then you just put the top back on. So you just twist it back on and then when you want to use it, I would just make sure you use a napkin or something and then squeeze it just a little bit until you see that water coming down. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. 
But again, when you're using the Derwent Ink Tents, don't drench your brush. Just put a very little bit of water on there and if it has too much water on it, you could just wipe it off just like this onto a napkin or a paper towel. So this would be the next way to activate the color and this is very much like their brush, but I really like this method better. I absolutely love using my water brushes with my Derwent Ink Tents the absolute most. And I think this one, since I was able to control the water a lot better because I used a water brush, I think that really helps to be able to control the water. But you can see the difference here. You can tell that this one had a lot more water and this one does not, but you could see the difference between those. So this one is with the brush, this one is with the water brush. So this is the brush with water and this is what it looks like not activated. And then here is the water brush. Okay, so now this is where the question came up in my Facebook group. Somebody had asked about using an alcohol marker to activate the colors. Let me go ahead and use a different color here just for the video. But now I have chili red and I'm gonna lay some of this down here. I have my Ohuhu Colorless Blender, but let's go ahead and see what happens when we go over this now with the Colorless Blender. And see, you could still activate it with the Colorless Blender and you can see the difference between this and this. It doesn't look that much different, but both methods do work. And then I think I'm gonna use the same color to come over here and put a little bit more of this down. And I'm gonna show you what happens when you use a water-based marker. Now this is my Tombow water-based marker. If you saw one of my more recent videos, you know that I just got the whole set of Tombows. I'm absolutely in love with them. But let's go ahead and see what happens when we go over this with the water-based blender. So after you use your water-based blender, you're gonna see that you do have a little bit of the color on the tip. And I like to take a napkin or something and just make sure that that comes off. But I just don't want the color to stay on my blenders. Okay, so the next method I want to share with you is the brush to tip method. For this one, you could use the water brush or you can use your regular paintbrush. And you would just wet your paintbrush. It is very important after you've used your brush to make sure that you actually clean it off, take the color off before you switch to another color. So my brush is now wet. All I'm gonna do is I am going to take some of the color from the tip of the pencil and I'm going to just lay it down on the paper and that looks more like watercolor. So you can see the differences in what they actually look like and you can tell this one does have a little bit more water but that is the brush to tip method and that is a whole lot of fun. And again, after you use this method, I would just make sure that you take the water off the tip of your pencil. So the next technique I want to be able to show you is a cool idea that you could use if you were doing like a background or something on a coloring page. So all you would do is you would just splash the color onto the page and you could do it with one color or two colors. You can make different color little speckles and you can do that all over the background. Now, if you were doing this on a coloring page, look how cool that looks. I wanna show you what it would look like if it were two different colors because I feel like that would look really, really cool. Now for this method, I am wetting my brush quite a bit more. And I think quite a bit more <laughs> because it did splatter just a bit more. But look how cool that effect is. Once I laid the other color down there, the colors are actually spreading into one another. That is so super cool. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Now, if you wanted to do this method on the background of a coloring page and you wanted to do it with maybe two, three, four colors, that would look super, super cool on a background. Now, if you were bringing this to your coloring book and doing this for a background, I would suggest making sure that you you do it first and cover the image that you're going to be coloring. All you would have to do is lay a piece of paper down on top of the coloring page and then do your splattering. But after you do this method, always make sure that you use your napkin and clean off the top of your uh, lead of your pencil. I don't like to leave the water on there because I just don't want to ruin my pencil. 
So I have the Caran d'Ache palette here. I absolutely love this palette. It's so great for mixing your colors, for watercolors, for these Derwent ink tents, and for many, many other things. My Neo colors, I actually purchased it when I bought my Neo colors so that I could use it to blend my colors together. But if you use the rough side, you can go ahead and blend your colors on here and use them just like a watercolor. So I'm gonna show you that now. So first I'm gonna show you with just one color. This is the iron green. And so you would just color on top of this rough side of this palette. And then let's use the water brush this time. And for something like this, I would use a little bit more water because you wanna activate that and get it on your brush. And then you're just gonna bring it to your coloring page. Okay, so that's the palette to page method. And now I wanna show you the palette to page, but we're gonna use this to blend a couple of the colors together to create another color. By doing that, it allows you to be able to experiment with the color, add more color, do whatever you need to do to get the exact color that you want before you bring it to your coloring page. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the same green that I used before, and I'm gonna lay some of this down here, again, on the rough side. And then I'm going to take my yellow, what is this? This is cadmium yellow. And I'm gonna use the water brush this time again, and I'm just going to blend these colors together to create a whole new color. And then I'm going to just put that on my coloring page. So you can see that it works pretty much the same way as the palette to page. You're just putting two colors together to create a color you may not have in your set. And then after experimenting with it and getting it the way that you want it, let's go ahead and go a little bit further by maybe adding another color to that. Let's try and see what happens with a blue. So if I come in here and I add a little bit of blue to this, let's see what's gonna happen now. Again, we're gonna use the water brush and I'm gonna pull some of that color in here and I'm gonna mix it all together. And we are going to lay it on our page. And that one worked a little bit better because I did use a little bit more water. So you can see the difference here with a little less water and a little more water. They both look really, really nice. If you are doing this in your coloring book, you may wanna stick with a little bit less water rather than using more water depending on the paper in your coloring book. Some of the coloring books can handle a little bit more water, but most of them probably cannot. If you are doing something on watercolor paper, you are totally okay to do it like this, blend your colors together, add a little bit extra water, get the effect you want, and lay it down on your watercolor paper because it will handle it very, very well. And I am very lucky that I actually have a printer that prints on watercolor paper. So I could actually take my coloring book PDFs or even copy from a coloring book and I can scan those and put them into my printer and I can print any coloring page I want onto watercolor paper. So many of you always ask me which printer I have and so I've been trying to link that down in the description box below. So if you ever are looking for a printer because you want to be able to print your PDF uh, coloring pages, on absolutely any paper. I do usually have that down there for you. Okay, so I have a sheet of watercolor paper here and I am going to try something a little bit different because I think that you could probably use the watercolor paper if you're coloring your coloring book and use the watercolor paper to mix your colors. So I'm gonna test that out and see how it works. And I think this time I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush. This brush is one that was sent to me by the company that sent me the beginner watercolors that I recently did a review on. These are fabulous brushes. I will have these linked down below. So I'm just cleaning off my brush to get all the color off there. And how about we try this with a little bit of color mixing. So I think I'm gonna use the chili red with the cadmium yellow. Oh, oops, that had some of the other color on it. Hopefully that won't matter much. Actually, let me try it again, just in case, because I think it had a little bit of blue or green in there from when I was using it previously. So let's go ahead and put the cadmium yellow down here. And I'm gonna get my brush pretty wet for this one, and I'm going to go over these colors, and I'm gonna blend them together. And you can actually see how different too they work on the watercolor paper. So now that I have a blend of those two colors and I have it on my brush, then I could bring it to my coloring book.
So you can do it that way too if you wanted to. That's just another little tip. And you can buy watercolor pads that are very, very small. I have a big, huge sheet here because that's all I have. But you can buy little watercolor pads if you wanted to be able to do that. And that way you can be able to bring your color from the watercolor paper to here. You could blend your colors. You could do whatever you want. And this is another cool idea for those of you that don't want to run out and spend like... I don't know, $10 or $11 or $12 or however much this was. I absolutely love this, but you definitely don't need it. If you have watercolor paper laying around, then you can probably use this method instead because you can see that they pretty much look exactly the same compared to when I went from the palette to the page. So a lot of people have asked me about this outliner that comes with the Derwent Ink Tense. It comes with the 72 set. I'm pretty sure it probably comes with the other sets. I'm really not sure I'd have to go look, but I don't see why they would leave it out of the other sets because it's pretty important, especially if you want to be a bit of an artist or even draw something on your coloring pages and be able to use the Derwent Ink Tense over it. So what you would do with this is you would just draw something out. Let me try to just come in here and draw a leaf. Okay, y'all, so I don't consider myself an artist by any means, but there's my leaf, and I'm just going to use this to demonstrate and show you how you would use these if you wanted to draw something maybe onto the back of your coloring pages. Even if you're working on your artistry and you're getting into drawing and you want to be able to use your Derwent ink tents to be able to do that, you can totally do so, but I'm going to show you that you could just color with the Derwent ink tents right over this and make a beautiful leaf or like even if you wanted to put some hearts in the background of your coloring pages or even circles in the background of your coloring pages, you would use the outliner and then you would just go over it with the pencils. So I have the iron green and the vivid green and the apple green. So I'm just laying down my lightest color. Then I'm gonna come back and lay my mid-tone down here. But another great thing about these Inktense pencils is that it gets your coloring pages done so much quicker. If you're a slow colorist, then you may actually really love these. And I don't know, I think everybody loves these just because they are so unique. I'm just adding some of this color. And then once I get all these colors laid down here, I'm going to show you how they blend together. I think this one was still a little bit wet on one side. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some water to this and I'm going to show you how they blend together. And you want to start with the lightest color and move your way outward. And then I like to brush off my brush when I'm doing this because I don't want to pull my lighter colors into my darker colors. But you could see how well these work on this paper. Again, this is the Spring Hill paper. And unfortunately, it's not available anymore on Amazon. It makes me want to cry because this is my favorite paper. And I have been working a lot with the Nina paper, but I just do not like that paper as much as this one. I probably should have grabbed my thinner water brush for this. Okay, now I want to show you all something really cool about these. Now, they are permanent once you lay that down and activate them. So once it dries, it is permanent color. So this gives you the ability to be able to layer the colors. So you can always come back and you can lay more color right over the top. And that is the beauty of these. I absolutely love them. You could even come back and lay another color or a different color right over the top if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that and show you this with the cadmium yellow. Okay, so I'm just going to come back in here and I'm going to lay some of this cadmium yellow right in here. And look how that just lays down there. Now, I could either activate this or not activate it. It's totally up to you. But look how it just changed it up just a little bit. And then I can come back with my apple green and blend a little bit more of that in there. This was my lightest color. And I don't know how much more this paper is gonna handle. I think I'm gonna use the water brush just because I don't want it to be too wet. But then I could come back and I can activate that again. And you can do as much as the paper will handle. I think that this paper has pretty much had it. <laughs> But I just really wanted to show y'all how wonderful that outliner is. 
And if you just want to be able to draw your own things, you can totally do that. And I plan on showing you a little bit more of the layering method actually in a coloring book because I really want y'all to see how well these perform inside a coloring book. I've had really good luck with these inside the Maria Trolle books. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to show you some do's and don'ts <laughs> and ways to use these pencils to blend the colors. Now I've already picked out some colors so I'm going to start with some reds and oranges and we're going to I'm going to show you exactly how to blend them and I'm going to show you why you should do it one way and not the other way and I'm going to demonstrate it all for y'all. So I've got chili red, tangerine, and cadmium yellow. So I'm going to come down here and lay my red and then I am going to blend an orange into that and you could see how well these blend together when they're not activated and then my yellow and oops my yellow has my yellow still had blue on it <laughs> now I'm gonna do it again over here because I'm gonna show you the right way and the wrong way <laughs> I have my water brush and I want to start at the bottom and go to the top because like I showed you with the leaf, you don't want to pull your darkest color into the lightest color because you will not get the same effect. So if you just start at the lightest and you go up into the darkest color, you're gonna get the best effect for blending these together while also activating them. Now I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna show you what would happen if you go darkest to lightest. So if I start at the darkest, and I come down to the lightest, that is how they look. I mean, it still looks nice, but when you're working in a coloring book and you're working in a very, very small space, you don't want the colors running into one another or your darker colors completely getting rid of your lighter colors. And you could see by looking at this one over here that this orange totally blended into the yellow. So we basically lost our yellow. So the yellow is no longer there. I mean, this is pretty too. So if you wanted that look and you were working in a bigger area, you may wanna go ahead and do this. But for a coloring book where we have more intricate spaces, this is going to help you much, much more. And I'm going to demonstrate that when we bring this to a coloring book in the next video. Now I want to show you why it is so important to clean your brush. <laughs> so I am going to put down some red right here. This is my chili red. And then I'm going to put my vivid green right here. And we're gonna see what happens here when we go right from one to the other. I'm going to clean my brush to go over the red. So that is my red. Now, if I just came right back over into the green, you could see that it actually got some of the red in it up here and it made it look really muddy-like up here at the top. Now, if I were to have cleaned my brush, let's go ahead and do that one up here. Now I have a totally clean brush and I'm gonna go over this. And you could see the difference from this one to this one. So this is the actual color and then this one had the red blended into it because I never cleaned my brush. So if you were wanting to do a blend of colors, of course that would be totally okay. <laughs> but I wouldn't want to be red blending my red into my green because you're gonna get this look it just makes it look really muddy and that's not going to be as pretty on your coloring page or maybe y'all like it I don't know but the best way to do it is definitely to clean off your brush when you want to go from one color to the other so I hope this video was helpful and that y'all enjoyed it and if you try any of these methods in a coloring book I would love to see you share them in my Facebook group especially if you try this splatter background I think that's so super cool I might actually try that let me know if you want to see that in a tutorial here on my channel and I could totally do that and show you how you would have to cover the page and all of that to make sure that it turned out exactly the way that you wanted it to. Hopefully by watching this video you have found some new methods to use with your Derwent ink tents. If this encouraged you to purchase your own set of Derwent ink tents <laughs> 
you will totally love them. I absolutely love this. It's one of my favorite sets of pencils because they are just so unique and you could do so many things with them. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please do give it a thumbs up because that really helps my channel out a whole lot and it helps my videos to be seen by other colorists in the coloring community. Everything you've seen in this video you will find down in the description box below. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.